what was not possible before is possible now. Thanks to the Hugging Face team, now we can run Zephyr model on free Google Colab version. In this video, you're going to learn how to run the Zephyr model, the new 7 billion parameter model on free Google Colab. That is a T4 machine on the GPU version. We're going to run it on free Google Colab. This is all possible because Hugging Face team decided to share the sharded models, which are like the bits and pieces of the models, which I'll quickly show you now. And that is what we're going to use to run with the chat template also part of Hugging Face tokenizers and we're going to use it. To begin with, first I would like to quickly show you the Zephyr model. If you have not seen my Zephyr video before, this is a new 7 billion parameter model. It's called the alpha model because they are expecting more models to come in. But this is the first model in a series and this model uh, does not have uh, the traditional alignment that we have seen before which is RLHF reinforcement learning from human feedback rather what they have done is they have used a new technique called DPO direct preference optimization to do the alignment or final you know the final touch of the model so based on the DPO based like built on top of Mistral 7 billion parameter model this model has been fine-tuned on ultra chat data set it's a data it's a data set with multi-level conversation so Somebody asks something, respond something, respond something, respond something. So this is a multi-level conversation. So this model has got a similar uh, data set and that is what has been used to fine tune this model. And based on this fine tuned model, this model has performed really good on empty bench data set, which is a multi-turn conversational benchmark that is usually evaluated to check how the model is good for multiple conversations, like not necessarily question and answering, but also have a conversation. And um, yeah, this model is an MIT license model, thanks to the ultra chat data set, which ultimately changed the data set licenses that ultimately allowed uh, Zephyr to have MIT license. So enough of the discussion, uh, what is the sharded model? So typically when you see a model getting released, this would get released in two formats. Either it would get released in a PyTorch file format, or it would get released in a safe tensor format. If you have been following our channel from the stable diffusion world, you know that why we use safe tensors. Very briefly, safe tensors are a particular format where you cannot have like a malware or something inside it. So that's that's why safe tensors are used. During the stable diffusion world, we used to heavily use CKPT models, but those had uh, people started bundling malwares at the time. You know, it was very hard to track. That's why if you see Hugging Face started having these kind of uh, the scanning option as well and uh, the safe tensors as an option. So now you've got safe tensors and the PyTorch model. Now when you have these models, usually if you see like any model, like for example, you can even take Mistral for an example. If you take Mistral for an example, you would immediately notice that mostly one or two files is what they would share. Like for example, you have got a 9.9 .9 gig, which is a 10 GB and the 5 gig. There are two files that are shared with you. As you can see, these are pickle files, the PyTorch files. Now, when you have these big files, it becomes really hard for you to fit in the memory, especially when you have, let's say like a 15 GB memory on uh, like a free version of Google Colab. It's hard to fit in even RAM. It's hard to fit in even the graphics memory. And that is where there is a library from Hugging Face called Accelerate really helps you. Accelerate helps you to swap items between the system memory, the graphics memory, and make it more efficient for you to l run large models, even with a limited amount of memory. But when these models are shared like this, like, like large files, it's, it doesn't give a lot of options for Accelerate to do the memory management like the swapping because it's too big files. Like what do you do with that? That is where a concept of sharded model comes into picture where somebody takes a model and literally shards them and then have like multiple smaller pieces. If you see here, you've got like a two gig, two gig, two gig, two gig, two gig, and finally one gig. So you've got like multiple sharded models of the same bigger model now what this allows uh, Accelerate to do that is it, uh, it can put one file in the system memory uh, or RAM, the other file in the GPU memory, the VRAM, and it can manage that and it allows you to do, like run this kind of model without any quantization effort on free Google Colab. And that's exactly what we're going to see now. This Google Colab notebook is completely created by Hugging Face team. Thanks to them for sharing this Google Colab. The first step is for you to, first, let's, let me show you the GPU. So you can see that I'm using T4 and you can also see here I'm using T4, which is the basic GPU that you get on Hugging uh, Google Colab. The next thing that you have to do is you have two dependencies. The first one, install transformers. 
The second one, install accelerate, which we just said, it helps you run like large models. It does a lot of things like at least in this particular point, we are trying to use accelerate to do the memory management so that we can run large models with the limited amount of resource computation that we have got. The next thing after you have successfully installed these two, the next thing that you have to do is you have to import torch. That's just only for the data type thing. And second one is from transformers import pipeline. We have already discussed this multiple times. One of the easiest ways to run any natural language processing task, NLP task or audio classification or you know, image classification and certain other tasks that are used to be usually done with transformers library from hugging face could be easily done with pipeline because all it takes is like one single line of Python code and you would be able to do it. And that's exactly what we're doing. So we're creating a pipeline and the task for the pipeline is text generation. You can go look at the documentation. You would see other types of tasks as well. You would see like uh, text classification, image classification, audio classification, audio generation. You have like a lot of other tasks, but here in this particular case, we are trying to do text generation. And this is the model that we have selected, which we just saw where we have got the sharded models. And this is the torch data type we are specifying. We are saying that we want B float 16 as the data type device map device underscore map is equal to auto is where you tell specifically accelerate to automatically manage your memory. You are not specifically saying where to put it. You're just simply saying, okay, automatically manage my memory in such a way that, you know, efficiently move pieces here and there so that I can run this large model. And as you might have noticed, we are not explicitly using either bits and bytes. And also we are not explicitly changing the quantization. Like we are not quantizing the model, We're literally taking the model in this particular data type and then we started using it. So once we create the pipe and uh, it's going to start downloading the models, as you can see, it downloads all the bits and pieces by default, it takes the safe tensors, not the PyTorch model. Once the model and the tokenizer has been downloaded, the next thing that you have to do is you have to prepare the inputs. How do you prepare the inputs? This follows a chat ML template. So you can see here, you have got three kinds of roles. One is a system role. The second one is a user role and the third one is an assistant role. So it's very important for you to specify the right role so that you get the right output. So this is where the, we have got the message. The first role is a system role and you are specifying what the system is supposed to do. You are a friendly chatbot who always responds in the style of a corporate management guru. I came up with this prompt like it's quite funny. Um, you know, when you, when you see all the BS it throws. So that is the system prompt. Then the user message, which is what we are going to ask the AI or large language model. So why does a fisherman fish every day? It's a simple question. Now it is going to put your, put its response inside the assistant role. So you have got system, user and assistant. And that's how you can also build the conversation. So once you have this message intact, which has got the prompt in itself, and if you wish, you can keep the prompt separately and then use an F string and add it up to you. So once you have the message intact, then you are going to use it for the prompt. So you're going to say pipe dot tokenizer dot apply underscore chat template. You can see the documentation here. So it has all the details about the chat template. What we are using is we're using the chat template to format our responses in such a way. And you can also, when we print it, you can see, so it says system, you are a friendly chatbot who always responds in style of a management guru. And it ends here. And then user, why does a fisherman fish every day? And it ends here and then assistant. So this is the format you have got. Once you have the prompt in the right format, the chat ML format, then all you have to do is the typical thing. Use pipe, send the prompt, specify how much tokens you want and all the other hyperparameters that you usually use with large language models and then get the output and print the generated text. So for example, for my question, why does a fisherman fish every day in the style of a corporate management guru? It says, as a corporate management guru, I would like to offer a perspective that can apply to this scenario. The fisherman's daily fishing routine is a reflection of strategic approach to managing a business. By consistently fishing every day, the fisherman is increasing the probability of catching a fish, catching a significant number of fish, which can result in higher revenue and greater profitability. I don't want to read further. And um, yeah, so let's uh, just because we are doing a demo, let me change it and then ask a different question. You are a friendly chatbot who always responds in the style of an Indian parent. Um, I just won gold medal in Olympics. Any thoughts? First, we have got the message. 
we have converted the message in the right format. So it's the system message and it's the user message and the assistant message begins here. And then we are going to generate. It takes a couple of seconds, which I'm going to edit so that you don't have to wait. It took me exactly 40 seconds for this to run. And this is due to a lot of reasons. One, we are not using a quantized model. Second one, the prompt system prompt, we have given the user message and what kind of baggage the prompt has got. All these things factor into creating this final output, which in this case took 40 seconds. What is the output? My dear child, winning a gold medal in Olympics is a remarkable achievement and you should be proud of your accomplishment. But remember, there is always room for improvement and you must continue your hard work. Strive for excellence in all aspects of your life. Keep your feet on the ground and your head in the clouds. Congratulations. With that, I end this video where you learned how to run the Zephyr 7 billion parameter model without any quantization on the free version of Google Colab thanks to Hugging Faces sharded models that helped us do this thing. The Google Colab notebook will be in the YouTube description. See you in another video. Happy prompting.